See, hey, Jason. One thing I would really like the clarification on is exactly what the Phoenix Phenomenon is. Is it a planet? Okay, this is an excellent question, and the reason is because your confusion is totally my fault. When I first wrote Chronicon, I was not a simulationist. When I first wrote Chronicon, I just thought that it was God. God is the reason why. 10,000 something mathematical calculations show that history is entirely too perfect. Way too perfect. Some of my future videos are going to shock you with the mathematical parallels that cannot be, cannot be refuted. I'm going to show the charts. I'm going to show where a whole series of events are just like algorithms throughout history. It's shocking. I have not released a single video like this yet. It, it, it's just, it, it's, it's mind-blowing that events in history occurred with such mathematical precision that, that the next series of events that were going to be relative to those could be, could be foreseen, could have been prophesied, if you would have known what to look for. By the time I finished Chronicon, you have to understand, I'm an ex-con. I was in prison for about 16 years doing this. I went to prison when I was 17 years old. I spent 26 years and 48 days in Texas prison. I was not supposed to be in there after I was 23 years old. But a series of events, I don't want to get into the details, but I ended up getting a whole new prison sentence in prison, and I stayed a lot longer. I could have been out after about 15 or 16 years, but by that time, I was a mad son of a bitch and didn't care. And then when I started caring, I really didn't care enough to where I was going to act, I was going to work for the state in manufacturing logistics in a factory and do what I was supposed to because now I'm deep off in some research and the only thing that matters is getting to the bottom, getting to the truth. Now I'm so deep in Chronicon, I don't care about being released. I have so many different organizations, institutes, and individuals who were basically sending me all the, the reading material I needed. I was allowed to I was allowed to collect about 1,267 nonfiction reference books and data mine them. And I no longer wanted out of prison. I wanted to finish my life's research all and be able, and be able to be released from prison having this done because I knew when I hit the streets, it was going to be different. There are family obligations and there are vacations and there are bills have to get paid. And, and then you have your interrelationships and relationships. And I just knew that I was not going to have all the free time that I had in prison to do what I was doing. So I willingly stayed. And by willingly staying, what I mean is, is I did not obey the rules anymore. I did what was necessary to acquire the major cases that I needed so I couldn't make parole. I did not care. I was 100% into my research. Now, having said that, it was also a chip on my shoulder because I was a kid when they put me in prison and, and I was already getting to be an older man by the time they had seriously considered releasing me. So I didn't, I just, it was, I had an attitude. So I was released at 43 years old. And this was four and a half years ago and I'm, uh, <coughs> Excuse me. And while I was in prison, I was convinced that the Newtonian physics model of our existence was still the right model. I had not come into contact with information that would have told me otherwise. So I'm trying to put the Phoenix phenomenon into this setting, and to me it was a planet that was appearing every 138 years. But then again, there was another part of my being that was rebelling against this because it's mathematically impossible for the same bolide, comet, a planetoid, lunar body, uh, uh, dust veil, or planet to appear at the exact same time the month of May, mid-May, over a 5,000 year documented period without any deviation, all the way up till 1902, the last time it was it was seen in, in, in the month of May. It's mathematically impossible. We have way too many dynamic systems uh, in Newtonian physics that prevent that from happening. It's not gonna happen, but it's in recorded history and I, I've documented in my book, When the Sun Darkens. And then I continued that with so many more discoveries in my book, Nostradamus and the Planets of Apocalypse. And then even more in my book, Secrets of, matter of fact, imagine that, Nostradamus and the Planets of Apocalypse, Shocking Secrets of Antiquity, it's a big book. Shocking Secrets of Antiquity, here's the one that started it all, When the Sun Darkens. This one started it all. <coughs> Uh, there is some Phoenix material in here, but it's not much because it wasn't the subject matter. The subject matter of this book is how profound the Great Pyramid is in Egypt and how every other pyramid in the world was an attempt by other cultures who had remembered it and attempted to copy it for different reasons. But uh, this, is a, this is a very interesting book. And this is my book on giants, which has been probably ordered and read by more people around the world than any. No, I'm not a best-selling selling author, and I probably never will be. But a lot of people have ordered and read this book. For some reason, New Zealand and the UK are my best, are, are my best client base, customer base. But anyway, uh, 
No, I'm a simulationist now. Now I see in simulation theory that we are involved in a, in a simulated holography that mimics a true and real universe. I believe that humans at some distant point, either in the future or in the past, knew of a series of problems that they were gonna have to deal with. And the best way to see was to create computer simulated narratives and let them go and just let see, see where they go. But introduce the cataclysm protocols by which they knew they were dealing with or had to deal with and see what was the best methods for survival because the phoenix phenomenon is harrowing what it has done in ancient times it's shocking and to have the records we have today is also mind-blowing considering so many civilizations sank, simply sank into the ground they vanished they ended in volcanic resurfacing we have found evidence of them two miles below the surface of the earth in just south of Hevener, oklahoma and many other places in north america an entire world totally buried by other parts of the world we don't know if that mud's coming from the sky or if it's coming somewhere else but whole entire stone infrastructures have been found deep below the United States of America, way underneath the Rocky Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains. And uh, many, many of my posts and books and articles and some of these videos even, even explain uh, these findings when they were found and why the Smithsonian Institute has not only covered them up, but actually filled whole entire old derelict ships with uh, artifacts and then burned them at sea and sank them. But, uh, they've been sued for that, as a matter of fact. So. Uh, the Phoenix Phenomenon, while its effect is harrowing, I don't believe at all that it was the design of a wicked being. Yes, I do believe in a Demiurge. I do believe that there is a Demiurge that controls this world. The predator versus prey ecosphere is not natural. That animals have to not only rend each other to death and, 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 and devour each other is so antithetical to any type of maturity of the human spirit. Uh, that I just can't I can't divorce myself from the idea that I'm living in a completely wicked evil world that masks itself in just natural ecology when it's violent everything about this world is extremely violent as a matter of fact most people's internal impulses when they come across situations that are opposite of what they either expect or want to happen it's a very violent reaction. People are always suppressing their first thoughts, which is basically, and uh, not, to, not to offend, but I'd like to slap the shit out of that person. Or, or man, I, man, if I'm six foot four, I beat the hell out. Man, we, we think these thoughts all, all the time. And I'm not, I'm not the only one guilty of it. So women go to church every single Sunday. They have problems with somebody. They think they tantamount to the same thing. This is something that we mask in culture. And we have innate tendencies to be very violent and those of us that are feared the most are the ones who for some reason our 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 inner reserves our, our reason our logic wasn't enough to stop us from doing what we did and we paid the price and some of some people haven't paid the price hell we have we have we have a, a homicidal maniacs at the top levels of government who've got get away with it all the time but uh like I said, I, I digress. The Phoenix phenomenon is not something that was created by an evil being. It was created by a divine. A, it was created as, by a benefactor. It actually keeps the human race from being totally enslaved because it, it, it basically resets civilization whenever it needs to. Not, not every 138 years, but it does appear every 138 years in the month of May. And there are governors that are set up, set up they're, they're set up all over the stellosphere, watching us and recording events and making sure that we haven't matured to a certain point, like the Tower of Babel, we became so so vastly intelligent that we became a threat. And then uh, something had to happen, we had to get set down a notch. We had to be divided. Only in a computer simulation can, can a single people, according to the Sumerian records, the entire world, all cultures and all races spoke the exact same tongue. It was a mother tongue. And after, <coughs> excuse me, after the Sumerian, Sumerian, we have Akkadian records, Edomite records, Amorite, Hurrian. We have records of Urartu. We have the Iblaic, the Ableitic texts, uh, Ebla. We have the Ugaritic texts. We have the texts from the Hittites. Every single archive that we have found buried in the ground comported with the idea that in ancient times there was one single speech but what the hell happened <laughs>